Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK as part of IBM Europe. This movie is about workload partitions, or WPAR for short, and application mobility, where we move these WPARs between machines. This is all part of AIX6. We're now going to have a look at Workload Partition Manager, logging in, starting and stopping the workload partitions, and generally using the interface. We access the Workload Partition Manager via a standard console. And so here we are in uh, Internet Explorer, and we're going to use this uh, URL here to get to the uh, the manager. We have a secured link. This is the host name. We can use port one four 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 three, and then slash IBM slash cancel. So let's go there now. First of all, we have to log on to prove that uh, we have the right to access. So let's do that quickly now. Now, when you first log on for the first time, you get this screen up here. It's a welcome screen. And I'll just move this barrier over here. I'm using this fairly small window here to help the uh, the movies work well. So I might have to scroll up and down. So there's a welcome screen. gives you a few little bits of information about using uh, Workload Partition Manager. Then uh, what you tend to do is open up these little boxes here that give you all the different commands and uh, tabs that you want, you want to work at. The first and most important two are this Manage Systems. These are your uh, computers or really, I guess, these days the logical partitions in which you're running AIX6 as the global copy of AIX that will run Workload Partition Manager. Uh, the next one down here is the Workload Partitions themselves. And I've set it up for this user that the, I've got my tab set up here already so we can go and have a look at those directly. So here we have a list of the logical partitions on which we're running AIX6. And uh, I put in a description here to give me a little bit more information about uh, what these are. We can scroll these uh, various things back and forth by just grabbing hold of them. There's a left click and moving around. So these first two partitions are on two different uh, Power 6 machines that we have here in the center. We have uh, a small partition on a pizza box 505 machine. And we have the, the main ones that I'm working on today are on this uh, 550Q, an 8-way machine that has four logical partitions running AIX6. And I made a note in here that this one's actually running the NFS server that we're using. This one is actually running the workload partition manager itself, so this is the machine that we logged into. And uh, we have another one here that's got my NIM server in here to uh, install fresh copies of uh, AIX. We can see these are all online. That means the workload manager has talked to the client that's running on each of those different logical partitions. And we can instantly see that there's a, a whole lot of WPARs already running on, this, on these machines and how many of them are for each particular machine. So that gives us an overview. As uh, we grow our computer center using workload partition managers, this will... Uh, now let's go and have a look at the workload partitions itself by taking this tab here. Yeah, so these are the workload partitions we have uh, running in the, at the moment. And um, you can see the names. This is just a convention that I tend to use WP and then a two-digit number. And there's a few other ones that we've used uh, for demonstrations and things. We can move these things around like so and uh, increase some space in here. We can see that WP02 is a system partition. It's active. It's running. If it's not running, it's called defined. Um, this one is not mobile, so this one can't be moved with the application mobility or when we actually do it we take a relocation function and this is the machine it's actually running on these ones with the green ticks here are mobile that means they're currently running under uh, NFS and so we can move those between different machines we could put a description in here and we have a workload partition group that we can all now in here we instantly find we have three workload partitions that are defined but not actually running and a fourth one down here so let's start those up. We'll just select those ones. Then we go to the actions list in here and we can, these are the actions we can do, is either remove them or let's not do that. Let's start them up. It lists them here, says are you sure? Yes, we're sure. Okay, those four WPARs then have gone transitional. So they're being worked on, they're changing their state and we'll give them uh, a couple of seconds and they should all start up. At the top here it says whatever the last action we did, it was actually initiated successfully 
and uh, we can close this item if we want. Uh, that pops up every time we take an action to, to highlight the fact that it's kicked it off properly, but it doesn't actually uh, help very much. Um, otherwise, we tend to just leave it up there as information. Okay, so that was uh, starting uh, workload partitions up. Let's try the uh, opposite case in here. Um, I have a workload partition uh, here. Let's uh, shut this one down. Um, I've got these two here, and we'll do actions and stop. We can do a normal shutdown that will give users five minutes to shut down, a hard. that actually does uh, it in 60 seconds, and we'll do that. Or we can do a force, which is uh, as fast as it possibly can. It actually stops the workload partition uh, in its tracks. Okay, so again, these have gone transitional, and it will take a minute, and those will uh, then stop. And one thing we actually like to do is when we actually take an action like this that takes a while, we want to know what is actually going on. Well, we can do this over here with the task activity. We get a new tab uh, appear up here. And we can see then these are all the actions that we've taken, starting and stopping workload partitions in this case. There was a relocate here, one that failed. Um, I was deliberately trying to make them fail so that I could demonstrate what uh, the log files look like and we've got a relocate here that works. And these two are in progress, so if we want to drill in to find more information, we click on its item, and uh, while we did that, it actually finished, so it succeeded in this case. Um, and then it, so it actually stopped the partition, and then it retrieved the state of it to prove that it actually finished. So it does that in two parts. If we actually click on one of those parts of a particular thing, it tells us this is what we did, we stopped the partition, which one it was, <coughs> which machine it was running on, um, this is the actual command, so we could have logged on to the global copy of ARX that was running this workload partition and uh, run this command by hand. Um, this is the output of the command, we'd have seen this on the screen, and if there's any error messages, they actually appear here, and this is just a warning saying that uh, it's going to wait 60 seconds before it actually shuts it down. Now, if we have one that fails, we can go in here and find out the error messages, and if we go to the, uh, the command, it will tell us where the log file is that we can actually go and have a look at what happened and try to do some diagnosis. Let's go back to our list of uh, partitions here and we should find those two now in the defined state. Excellent. We can on this interface actually do some uh, things to make this easier to work with. This is in a sort of semi-random order here. You may find it's just easier to have them in an alphabetical order. That's far easier to read and, and find things. Or we might decide that um, we might actually want them in the state order so we can all the active ones at the top and we can do that there. So we have active and defined and they'll be transitional and those sorts of things as well. Um, or we can see in here that these workload partitions are fairly random uh, order of machines in here. We can actually order them by machine and then we can go down look down the list of uh, machines to actually find, there we go, so if you want to find out what's running on P10 it's those first two that we stopped and what's running on uh, SSC25 here, it's just this one here WPAR9. So we can find, uh, it's quite easy to find the particular partitions we actually want to uh, work with. In the next movie, we use application mobility to relocate a workload partition between two machines.